Praise the Lord. It's another <coughs> Tuesday evening. So glad to be here in the house of the Lord and be able to minister God's word. We thank each and every one of you who are with us in uh, tech land. However you're tuning in, whether it be uh, through the internet direct or whether it be through Rumble or YouTube as it's recorded and replayed, uh, uh, you know, the Word of God is so important for us to be knowledgeable of, particularly when it comes to the last of the last days, which I believe we are definitely living in at this point. <clears throat> uh, I want to thank once again our senior pastor, uh, Mike Yeager. I want to thank his son, uh, Michael Yeager, uh, the sound and video man, uh, and uh, really appreciate his faithfulness. Uh, you know, uh, he's the one that makes all this possible by uh, being here to to set up the sound for the speaker and then set up the video and have it recorded. Uh, of course, uh, Michael also is the assistant pastor of the church, and so he takes orders from the senior pastor, and his orders is to be faithful there at that, that booth back there. Amen. Uh, once again, we want to open up in a word of prayer. Thanking God for uh, being here with us in a corporate setting and, and, and uh, uh, for, for giving us the message that he has for the present hour. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father. You are so faithful and so good. We thank you, Lord God, that you uh, once again uh, faithfully see that your word is put out for man to hear. Lord God, for we know your word tells us there in Romans 10, uh, uh, 8 through uh, verses 17 about how, uh, you know, uh, to get saved. And it says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Hallelujah. And uh, that uh, he's also given to us each the measure of faith. And that measure of faith is, is uh, the, the faith that is brought into our hearts as the Spirit of God draws us through the ministering and preaching of the Word uh, and, and the testimony of those who uh, walk with God uh, to share the good news of the gospel, that measure of faith that is there at conversion. But hallelujah, that measure of faith just doesn't start at and, and, and remain at that measure of faith, but faith is uh, is measurable. It can grow, and it can become great faith. Uh, and uh, however, it can wane from time to time, where even as Jesus rebuked his disciples on a couple occasions and said, O ye of little faith. But Heavenly Father, we pray that, Lord God, we not be found as those with little faith. But Lord God, we would allow our faith to grow and to receive of the promises of your word and that, Lord God, you would be able to speak of each of us as having great faith. And we thank you for that. Thank you for this word. For, Lord God, you sent forth your word, Lord God, and you watch over it, Lord God, to see that, Lord God, it accomplishes that for which you send it forth. We rejoice for that in Jesus' blessed and holy name. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> last week we were speaking on message as in the days of Noah. And we uh, took our uh, main text that night from uh, Genesis chapter 6. And... Uh, I think I was accurate, but just in case uh, I wasn't, uh, uh, when it speaks of Enoch, Enoch would have been Noah's great-grandfather. And uh, 
we are uh, mindful of the fact that Noah had to have carried the book of Enoch, the writings of Enoch, upon the ark that that book has been preserved to this day. And while it's not canon of Scripture, we were told and instructed in last week's message that it is very accurate in history. And uh, you know there's not, not much that you can go back and, and uh, uh, research in history of the days before the flood. We have, you know, the uh, uh, five books uh, that were written by Moses, and, and uh, they are very historical books. And they're accurate uh, because God gave uh, Moses the, 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 the words and the knowledge to pen concerning days well ahead of him. And uh, then the days concerning his time here on earth uh, as the uh, deliverer that God used, the man that God used to be the deliverer of the Hebrew people from out of Egypt after 450 years of slavery in that land. But uh, Enoch's a very accurate book in history before the days of the flood. And... Uh, you know, as you check genealogy out through the Bible, you'll find out that the days before the flood were definitely days well ahead of Moses. But Enoch had written down many things that God had shared with him. And he wrote down accurately some of the history of the things that were going on even in his days. And in the days of his father, as his father would have shared those things with him. And so Enoch is a book that we can count uh, on being accurate when it comes to historical events before the flood, before the days of the flood. And uh, uh, chapter 6, it, it opened up and it said, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters and the daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them to wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man, for that he, is, that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years and there were giants, verse 4 says, in the earth in those days, also afterward, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. They were men of great stature and power and strength. Uh, uh, you know, uh, some of the writings uh, of, of the book of Enoch tells us that, uh, you know, uh, these giants that were born to the daughters of the son of men, uh, they, uh, they, they, they started to bring violence, great violence, into the, into the earth at that time. Uh, violence is, uh, had never been seen amongst the people uh, of, of the earth, humanity up to that point. Uh, they, uh, angels that came down and, 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 and cohabitated with the daughters of men, and, and I am accurate in saying angels, that they were angels, and, and uh, I did reference last week, we went to the book of Jude to find that out, that that's exactly how he addresses it, and Jude was referencing back to the historical knowledge that was available from the book of Enoch when he referenced them as angels. All right? They were, 
uh, definitely angels. But anyways, these angels were able to introduce a great uh, uh, technology for, for, for humankind in that day beyond that which was developed within the uh, human's uh, development of their intellect and, and their talents and their skills. And uh, so there were uh, things that uh, were, were done in those days immediately before the, the flood that technology-wise, uh, you know, as far as the, the uh, uh, creative skills of man, excuse me, were well ahead of those things that uh, took place uh, hundreds and hundreds of years after the flood, uh, even up to maybe a, a thousand years or so ahead of the flood. Uh, after the flood, uh, man's man's uh, ability to uh, uh, do do the things that were being done as far as uh, uh, creating uh, great things were were. Uh, not there, hundreds and possibly up to a thousand, fifteen hundred years after the flood. But uh, evil, all kinds of evil developed, uh, even to the point that we find out that uh, the giants that came from, they, 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 they not only pursued the daughters of men, but uh, they got involved in bestiality and and uh, some of what we consider mythological things that 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 we know through history uh, that you know uh, started back with ancient uh, civilizations um, such as the the Greeks and 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 the Romans and so forth and so on. Uh, may not be quite as mythological as we think. They might have actually been been actual things that did exist, and they didn't know how to describe them, uh, uh, you know, in uh, in human terms. But uh, you see, man can be involved in bestiality, but yet out of that doesn't produce the mix between man and animal. But these were angels who cohabitated with, with the daughters of men. And uh, so these giants weren't just mere humans. They were an abnormality, abnormality of 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 what pure human beings were, and uh, so so you know some of what we read in mythology might have actually been beasts and monsters that came forth from from this act of them cohabitating with animals, also having. Uh, sexual relationships with animals and bestiality. And, uh, you know, uh, men today must be aware and take note of what Bible speaks concerning the end times. And, uh, like I said, the book of Enoch was accurate enough in history that even Jesus referenced things from the book of, 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 of Enoch in that he writes in uh, 20, chapter 24, Matthew, in verse 37, he says, But in the days of Noah were, were so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. As in the days of Noah that were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days 
that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. In the giving in marriage, it means even to the multiple uh, marriages that they were involved in. Not just one marriage, not just having marriage as we perceive marriage today as be, be, being between one man and, and, and one woman, but multiple, they, I mean, they were divorcing and remarrying, divorcing and remarrying. Do not we have much of that going on in today's society? I've known people that were raised in the church that already went to, through uh, two and three divorces and remarriages. And, and, and you know, so uh, we, we see that happening in today's society. I mean, they were just going about their business in those days. Uh, just like nothing was going to happen, even though Noah took time while he was building the bar, uh, ark, and I'm sure uh, because it was such a spectacle to be seen, such a large ship being born, what are being uh, built in landlocked territory. I mean, there no no ocean nearby. And, uh, you know, our shipyards are always placed all, along the coast where there's ocean easily available to go ahead and launch those ships and to be able to use them. But uh, this was being built in landlocked area, far from the ocean. And it became a spectacle. People were traveling for miles and miles around to see this thing. And Noah would take time and minister about the the judgment that God told him was coming upon the earth and how God was going to destroy the whole earth, uh, the, the, the uh, whole sphere, sphere, uh, sphere, excuse me, once again, my eye tooth uh, getting tangled up or my tongue getting tied up on the eye tooth and not able to spit out the word right. The whole sphere of humanity and animals and, and so forth and so on was going to be destroyed by this completely. And uh, he preached that for uh, uh, 100 to 120 years. He preached that word of judgment. But man rejected it. They thought he was whoo, off. You know, his elevator wasn't going to the top building this big ship where he was building it, and, and they didn't receive it. And, uh, you know, uh, you shouldn't get offended whenever men don't um, receive your word of the pending judgment that's coming to humanity again, and we're getting ever so close to it, and it'll be a judgment of fire in the earth. A judgment of fire in the earth. The time of the great tribulation. The tribulation is going to be a judgment brought upon humanity for their disobedience. Excuse me, to the things of God. But um, it says in verse 39 of, of uh, chapter 24 of Matthew that... Uh, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall it also uh, be at the coming of the Son of Man. Then shall two be in, in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be at the grinding, uh, at the mill, shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken, and the other left. And it gives a warning there, Jesus speaks. It says, Watch therefore, ye know not what hour your Lord shall and doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have suffered 
uh, would not have suffered his house to be broken up. So it says in verse 44, Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Amen. The Son of Man cometh. In an hour that you think not. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to just quickly reference back to, to uh, Jude and uh, verse 14. Well, let's start and, and, and let's reference verse 6 first. And it says, the angels, that's a one chapter book, Jude, right? before the book of Revelation, and uh, it says, The angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Left their own habitation. They left the realms of the, 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 the heavenlies above the earth. And... Uh, It speaks how God has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness onto the judgment of the day of that great day. The day uh, when all shall be judged, both great and small. And uh, listen, there is a judgment coming. There is a judgment coming upon the earth, and we're very near that time of the great, uh, or the tribulation and the great tribulation. Uh, so, uh, Jude references from the uh, historical account of Enoch about these sons of men, which verse, uh, chapter 6 of Genesis references them as, were angels. I told you, uh, we said that last week, and I'm just re-emphasizing that for those who may not have been with us last week. And then verse 14 of the book of Jude says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him man do we ever hear people blaspheming god today we sure do don't we we hear men blaspheming God all the time in this day that we're living in. See, it's as the days of Noah. <laughs> they probably in those days were blaspheming God too as Noah was preaching the coming judgment that was uh, about to come upon all of humanity and, and all living things that were on the earth. Uh, so, uh, today we want to continue into what Enoch was prophesying there in verse 14 of the book of Jude. And we want to be speaking about the last days. And I only have time to get into one book to reference this. However, there are several books uh, written there in the New Testament that references what's going to take place in the very last of the last days. And starting with chapter 3 at verse 1, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and unthankful and unholy, without natural affection. Without natural affection. Are we in that day now? Men doing things unseemly with men. And women doing things that are unseemly and unnatural 
with, with women? Uh, do we have bestiality taking place in the earth today? We do. We have uh, pedophiles that, 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 that prey on, on children, on minors, and, and, and uh, uh, do whatever perverted sexual acts they want to or have and force them to do perverted acts, sexual acts upon them. We have this all going on today, even to the point that there have been laws passed to protect uh, some of this kind of behavior right now. You know, uh, uh, marriage is, at, at, at the, uh, what's acceptable in marriage has been changed by law, by laws of men in the earth today to allow for this uh, uh, abuse of God-ordained sexual activity and make it lawful. Men with men, being able to marry. Women with women, being able to marry. We, we, we know that we're not much behind the time whenever also pedophilia is going to be legalized, legalized here in this day and age. You just wait and see. I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. I mean, back 40 years ago, nobody would have perceived or even began to entertain the idea that marriage would be legalized to accept marriage between man and man and woman with woman. Pedophilia will be legalized uh, within a, a short number of years in this land. Men are, are so perverted. They, they, they are so uh, disobedient to the things of God. They, they, they embrace what's, what's evil as being good and what's good as being evil. Verse 3 says there in chapter 3 of 2 Timothy, Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinence, fierce, excuse me, despisers of those that do good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They have a Form, verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into the houses and lead captive silly women laden, laden with sins, led away with diverse lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Whew. Are we living in those days now? We are. We are. We're living in those days now where man does not see truth as being absolute. They say, well, what's truth to you may not be truth to another, and what's truth with, with, with me may not be what you perceive as truth. You know, uh, the book of Romans, I believe it is, where Paul addresses the fact that, uh, uh, you know, uh, thinking themselves to be wise, they become fools. We're living in those days now. I mean, if they would just, uh, you know, uh, take any length of time to hear of some of the foolishness that they're propagating today. And they want us to receive it as being normal. As being normal. Listen. Normality has sort of whoop, 
went right out the door today. You know, we're living in a, a day and an age where even common sense isn't all that common anymore. Not many people have common sense. We have people that have great intellect, but they have no common sense to take and, and, and bring understanding to the intellectual knowledge that they have. How to take and, and, and act in a normal mode of behavior. With others in the world. Hey, thank God for people who have high intelligence. But whenever your intelligence uh, uh, gets to the place where you put so much uh, uh, emphasis on your intellectual knowledge, that common sense just totally goes out the door. It leads to much, much evil and much wrong and much misunderstanding of how to apply the knowledge that they have. <clears throat> Verse 6 there in chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Now as Jannes and Jamaris, or Jambres uh, withstood Moses, so do these resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Reprobate. What does that word mean? Of no judgment. Having no judgment. Having no rational judgment of things concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, and purpose, faith, and long suffering, Paul writes here to Timothy, <coughs> charity and patience persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and uh, Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Amen. Listen, Jesus spoke. He said, listen, they hated me. They'll also hate you who are my followers. Who are my disciples? That's who we are as Christians, as believers in Christ and Jesus himself. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, listen, in this world you're going to have trials and tribulations. But he says, be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. Amen. Jesus overcome the world. Hallelujah. Listen, he overcome all the things of this world system. Every bit of it. And we become overcomers in him. Hallelujah. By him and through him. And uh, verse 6 uh what well, verse 12 uh, there of chapter 3, it says, Yea, in all that uh, will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. If we live 
uh, godly lives in Christ Jesus, we shall suffer persecution. We're living in a day and an age here in this country where Christians were really never really suffered persecution. Yes, they were mocked. Maybe they were ridiculed. I mean, hey, uh, in, 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 in the earlier days of, of uh, uh, the Pentecostal people, I mean, their churches, uh, the places where they gathered, oftentimes would have people standing outside and crying and, and, and shouting and ridiculing them and throwing rocks through the windows. I can remember as a child, uh, before uh, the church had actually had a building and a structure that they had built to, to meet in, uh, in the place where they were meeting before those days where they built the actual structure that became known as that church, uh, they were meeting in a building and rocks would come flying through the windows. We don't, we don't even, in, in our generation and in our children's generation and in our grandchildren's generation this day, we don't know anything of even that kind of persecution. But we do know that there's places in the world today where people are suffering persecution even to the point of death for their faith in the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ because they are Christians who are living a life that is in direct and complete obedience and submission to God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son and living according to how the Spirit of God is leading and directing them and bringing understanding of truth to them. They're suffering persecution even to the point of death in many nations today in this world, in China, that takes place. In India now, that is starting to take place. In Turkey, once again, they are becoming very anti-Christian and anti-Jewish. To where people are, are suffering all kinds of physical affliction being uh, brought upon them because of their faith. In God, the creator of all heaven and all earth. In the African nations, there are people that are losing their lives because they are Christians. And don't think that we're far behind that happening here in this nation where they're going to start locking Christians up. Because of their manner of life. Because of them speaking truth. In the light of a world that is throwing all truth to the side. And saying truth is as I see it. Not as what God's word speaks of it. We were, we were founded as a Christian nation. Founded on Christian principles. Uh, I mean, the, the people that first came and settled here from over in Europe, they came for religious freedom. And they declared that this land would be a, a place where, where the gospel would go forth into all the world. And for many years, we have been that. But today, that's all being thrown to the wind. Today, as you can read many places concerning the last days in the book of Peter, Paul wrote of it, how there's going to be all kinds of false prophets out there, even in the church, preaching damnable heresies and doctrines of demons in the church and putting it up as being the uh, the, 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 the gospel twisting the word of God to appease men. Men will become people who are gathering onto themselves teachers 
and ministers that tickle uh, their ears and make them feel good. Listen. We need preachers behind the pulpit today that will preach all the truth of the gospel. All the truth of the word of God. Amen. Amen. Not just preaching messages that make you feel so good. You know, every once in a while you got to hear, hear messages concerning the don'ts instead of just all the do's. You got to hear messages that don't twist the Word of God to say that which becomes pleasing for the hearers. We're living in those days now where this is going on in the church. But listen, <laughs> Jesus said there would be great trials and tribulations in the world. You would suffer them. But he said, be of good cheer, I have overcome. Amen. Hallelujah. And we become overcomers in him. For it's in Christ that we live. We, we at conversion, ask him to come into our lives and into our hearts and be our Lord and Savior. Amen. That means we, we give him place in our hearts and our lives. It's no longer uh, our way of doing things, but we want to we wanna be submissive to His ways of having His brothers and sisters brought into the kingdom to be God's sons and daughters doing as He did here in this earth. Amen. He tells us that uh, uh, the things that I do so shall you do, and even greater things. Amen. Greater in numbers. Greater in numbers. Amen. Why? Because it's not just Him in the earth. It's all of us, the ecclesia, the, the universal church of Jesus Christ in this earth. Hallelujah. And so... Many more things are being accomplished. Uh, we can see signs and miracles and many uh, healings taking place because he said that we as his followers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But most of the church don't operate in that today. Much of the church don't operate in that today. They don't believe in signs of wonders and great miracles anymore. Men even scoff at the idea of the, of, of, of the coming of Christ in the clouds of glory to receive His bride, the church, onto Himself to be with Him forever and ever. They say, hey, listen, uh, we, we, we've heard of these things for years, ever since we were little. And, and our parents heard of those things back in their days. And, and where is this, uh, this time of Christ coming in the clouds of glory and, and calling us up to be with Him? Where is it? They're becoming scoffers. Even people in the church, a lot of them, don't want to believe in the catching away of the bride. They come, become complacent about these things. These are the kind of days we're living in today. But listen, we got to remain steady. We need to re, uh, remain totally hooked up and filled with the life of the resurrected Jesus Christ and living in that resurrection life and being about the the, the, the work and the ministry of the kingdom of God in this earth. We need to be the steady, the consistent in this world today that we're living in. Instead of being involved and, and, and going astray after the things and the pleasures of this world which are temporal. We're to seek those things which are eternal. 
We are to seek after those things which are above the heavenly things. Amen. God's so good, so very good. He's raising up a strong remnant of people in the, in, 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 in the uh, church today. And when I speak of church today, I'm speaking of even the, the uh, apostate church today. Uh, he's, he's drawing people out of the uh, apostasy that's being ministered in the church today. He's drawing people who are pursuing and seeking the truth of the Word of God and, and being obedient to what Scripture speaks of here in the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He's, he's pursuing. He's calling those who will stand on what the Word of God says. They'll live godly lives because they're consistently and constantly giving themselves in fullness to the things of God and to His Word. Hallelujah. So it is in this day and age that we're living in. He has a remnant of people. And out of that remnant is, is revival rising up. Hallelujah. And out of that revival is going to come a third great awakening, which will, for a while, in uh, 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 a number of years, bring change into the world. Amen. Bring light into this darkened world. Yet, while there is time before we're taken out of here, and the man of sin, the Antichrist, is revealed. And then all hell's going to break out on this earth. We're living in the very last of the last days. But be of good cheer. God has a glorious future for all who will stand with Jesus Christ and will stand for the biblical teachings of His Word. Amen. We have a great reward. Listen, I believe it's Romans 5 and verse 8 that speaks, and it says, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Listen, God loves man that much that He is still holding back on sending his son forth to draw his bride onto himself. He's still waiting for that one. That one that will still be drawn to the place by the drawing of the Holy Spirit of God of faith and receive the measure of faith to call upon Jesus Christ to be his Lord and Savior, to receive his atoning death as the payment in full for the sins of humanity and for themselves personally. Listen, I don't have religion, I have relationship. And that's vital and important to understand and to realize. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus so loved us that he died even while we were yet sinners. He died for us. He was obedient to the will of his Father to have man, humanity, reconciled back onto him. Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you... Uh, have that conviction within you that you are a sinner. Listen, I got good news. There is a Savior who bought and paid the price to have you redeemed back to God your Creator and put back into a place of right standing with God the Creator. Today is the day of salvation. 
Will you choose today to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and allow him by making him Lord to come and live his life through you, living in the strength of the Spirit of Christ in you? Amen. If that same Spirit which raised Christ from, from the dead dwell in you, he shall quicken this mortal body. Amen. Amen. Physical death isn't the end for anybody. All is going to face eternity. It's where you're going to face it. There is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You have to make that decision while you're still living. Because the moment you draw your last breath and your heart beats its last beat, and you die physically, it's too late. Today is your day of salvation. The day that you've heard the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. I'm glad I'm a whosoever. Whosoever believeth in him should not die. But have everlasting life. Amen. Paul writes in his writings that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That means when this body of flesh dies, which cannot inherit heaven, your spirit and your soul is immediately ushered in to God's domain, His kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. To be in His presence forever and ever. God bless. We'll see you next week.